All right, well, thank you. And uh, thank you all for joining me today. Um, I My responsibilities at Mississippi State I'll cover vegetables, fruits, as well as pecans. And so um, I typically deal more so with vegetables than with some of the fruits, but blueberries are um, the largest fruit produced, uh, the biggest produced production in uh, Mississippi. And so there are a lot of different resources out there for blueberry diseases. And so with just 30 minutes, I'm gonna kind of hit on some topics that I thought might be a good review. Um, and so I will review some of those topics and then also point you to some resources where you can get some additional information that time just doesn't allow to, us to discuss today. So um, talking about plant diseases, this is a definition that I like. Plant disease is any abnormality in a plant's growth, development, functioning, value, or appearance due to the activity of a pathogenic biotic agent. I like going over the definition of plant disease because there are lots of things that may be confused with plant diseases. Um, and so if you are thinking that you have a plant disease but you're and you're trying to manage plant diseases, but the issue that you're dealing with is not actually a disease, then you may be spending extra money, extra time trying to manage the wrong issue. And so it's always important to know what exactly it is you're dealing with. So we're going to talk about plant diseases today. How do you know that you have a disease? Well, there are symptoms and there are signs. So your symptoms are the, the plant's reaction to infection. And in blueberries, some common symptoms include lesions on various plant tissues. You could have chlorotic or necrotic tissue. Um, in some cases with some of the viruses, like you see in the picture in the bottom right, you may have ring spots. These may often be red or dark purple in color with a green center. And then many of you are probably familiar with a number of the different fruit rots. In terms of signs, some diseases you may see symptoms alone. Some diseases you may see signs and symptoms, but the signs is the visible presence of a pathogen. And so some of the common um, signs that you may see with blueberry diseases are various fungal mycelia that you may see, for example, with botrytis or gray mold in blueberry, as in the top right photo. Um, or you can see sometimes massives of spores, like is common with anthracnose fruit rot, and it, where it produces that salmon colored mass of spores on those fruits that are infected. And so those are indications that you may have disease and that you may need to make sure that you are implementing a disease management program for those particular diseases. So here's something for you to think about. Can you identify blueberry diseases based on your experience and the information that I just gave you? So there are six photos up here of various symptoms. So if you look at that, are those plant diseases? Or are they something else? I'm testing Ed here, I see him taking. Dr. Sakura taking a closer look. So just thinking about what we discussed, what I just brought up, and looking at those, here's the answers. You have iron deficiency, mummy berry, leaf rust, powdery mildew, coal damage, and fire ant damage. So three of those are not actually plant diseases, but it's common sometimes to basically not everything that looks like a disease is, is, is a disease, but it's common to get some of those things mistaken for disease. So like I said, it's important to know what you're dealing with. So when we're thinking about disease, you need to be thinking preventatively. And there are three conditions that are necessary for disease development. You have to have the virulent pathogen, you have to have a susceptible host and you have to have the favorable environmental conditions for that pathogen um, in order for a disease to develop. And so when we're thinking about disease management, you can kind of try and expect what diseases may occur. And I'll talk about some of that with some specific diseases later. But if any one of those conditions is absent, as you saw with the X's that passed along in each of those three conditions, then disease will not develop. So when we're talking about disease management, we are trying to modify one of those components of the disease triangle, which was from illustrated on the previous slide. 
so that disease development does not occur. So the first step, as I already mentioned, in disease management is diagnosis. You have to identify the cause of the symptoms and then the specific management options that are effective against a particular pathogen and disease are gonna depend on the pathogen that is causing that disease and what we know about its life cycle. So how that pathogen is spread, where it comes from, how it may overwinter, what parts of the plant can be affected or infected, and so disease management and um, the diagnosis is a process. You may have to see, you may see an image or receive an image. You may see symptoms in the field, like you see it on the bottom left, but then you have to figure out what is causing those symptoms. And then the photos, images illustrated here show just different magnifications of what we as plant pathologists are trying to look for to make sure that we are getting the accurate diagnosis. So this was just an example of anthracnose on blueberry foliage. So just some things for you to think of when to help make you prepare to best manage diseases in your blueberry fields. You want to know your plant. You want to know the proper um, growth stages. You want to know what the various growth, growth stages look like, what healthy flowers look like. Um, you know, that's your crop. You want to be familiar with it. But you also need to know and be able to recognize the common diseases that may occur in your area. And this is uh, true for insect damage as well. So attending presentations such as this, looking at various literature or university extension resources to be able to know, hey, these are symptoms that might indicate that I have a disease, I need to look into this to make sure that you are properly prepared to manage diseases. You wanna be observant and scout regularly for disease. Disease can spread or can develop quickly and the pathogen can spread quickly. And so you wanna make sure that you are on top of everything and trying to prevent as much damage as possible. Keep records of what you're doing, what fungicides you may be spraying, what cultural practices um, you're using, what pathogens or diseases you may have had in the past so that you know if something is soil borne, for example, you know that in the future years, that may be something that you see again. Know where to find information about diseases. As I mentioned, there are a lot of available resources out there that are very useful. I'll discuss some of those next. Um, and then knowing what information to collect and who to contact for help so that you can accurately describe the situation um, to your extension agents or specialists um, so that they can best help you to determine the feasible disease management methods for the particular disease and your operations. So a few different resources that are out there, and I believe most of these have already been posted in the chat box. Um, again, I'm with Mississippi State University Extension. I believe it was towards the end of 2020. We just updated a publication we have that is available online on establishment and maintenance of blueberries, but I redid the disease section of this publication. And so there's a lot of photos as well as some information about description of the symptoms and everything in that photo, in that publication. And so that includes some of the diseases that I'll be discussing today, as well as some additional ones. Um, the Southern Region Small Fruit Consortium is um, also an important resource, www.smallfruits.org. The Small Fruit Consortium puts out a number of different IPM production guides, including one for um, conventional blueberry production, as well as one for organic blueberry pest management. Um, and so this is a really useful guide. This is what I use whenever I'm looking to find the best fungicide products for um, management of the various diseases. And then there's also a tab on that website for agent training. There are video presentations. Um, I don't believe the blueberry one is posted yet, but there, the blueberry IPM presentation 
by University of Georgia. It's a longer video that goes more in depth into some of the diseases that I won't have time to cover today. Um, but this guide is very useful and it provides descriptions of diseases, the various management options, as well as the rates, um, re-entry intervals, pre should be pre-harvest intervals, um, and then additional comments. And the guide is arranged by plant stage. And so I won't give specific fungicide names today, but an example of one of the pages out of that guide is um, shown on the screen here. So this shows some example listings for mummy berry and ripe rot. And you can see the fungicides are listed in order of best efficacy going down towards, um, so excellent is the represented by the E, VG is very good, but it goes from excellent to fair when those products are available. And so I mentioned some of that with, in terms of efficacy later on. And then another useful part of this guide is the seasonal at a glance fungicidal spray guide. And this just kind of gives you an idea of some of the fungicides that you may be using for the various diseases at the different um, stages of blueberry um, growth. Another really good resource is the My IPM app. This um, app is free for iPhone and Android devices. And it provides the information that you see here for a number of different diseases. Um, it includes photos, management guidelines. Some of the diseases even have audio clips that you can listen to that are just very short, like maybe two to three minutes. And then pesticide information in terms of the active ingredients that are labeled for those diseases as well. So several of the photos that I have in the presentation um, are from the My IPM app. So again, today, talked a little bit about disease and disease development, some things that you can do to be prepared, um, some of the resources that you can consult for additional information. And then um, I'm gonna talk about five different diseases and then give just some general disease management reminders. But the link in the chat box for the Blueberry IPM presentation, there is a longer presentation on disease management by Dr. Jonathan Oliver at University of Georgia. And he goes more in depth into various propagation and establishment issues, as well as root rot. Bacterial wilt is a bacterial disease that um, showed up in the last 10 years in Florida. And now um, University, uh, Georgia is also seeing some of these issues. So that would be a really good disease to learn about and watch out for in Alabama. Um, and then he discusses a couple of viruses more in depth. Um, and then again, some of the fungal leaf spots and fruit rots. And he does an excellent job of um, discussing a seasonal spray schedule for fungicides and just kind of looking at the season as a whole and when certain diseases um, are most prevalent during that timeline and um, points at which various fungicides should be applied for disease management. So I want to start out with Exhibicidium. Um, this is maybe one of the first diseases that you see in the beginning of the year. It is caused by a fungus and it can cause significant yield losses due not only to fruit drop, but to the loss of marketability. Because as you can see on the ripened blueberry fruits, you still have this greenish spot that is, it does not ripen and it stays discolored. And so the presence of those blueberries in a clamshell may make that entire clamshell unmarketable. And so symptoms of this disease are commonly observed from mid-March through June. So there is still time to see and determine if you may have this disease present in your plantings. The symptoms start out as green unripe spots on the ripened fruit. And you can see kind of the timeline from early symptom development through progressing through the advanced symptoms where the brown lesion and the photos of the far right may be mistaken for a number of other diseases. So commonly, this is an easy disease to identify. If you see that fourth picture on the top row, um, that is commonly what I get questions about in photos sent to me asking what the problem is. Um, so it can affect the leaves as well as the fruits. 
you can see the unripened fruit. You may start to see some of the lesion develop, but it is very prominent on the ripened fruit. And so, again, I wanted to talk about this one first because it is one of the first diseases that you may see. And there is still some time to see when this disease, if this disease is present in your field. Um, managing the plant canopy to increase air circulation can help reduce the development of this disease. But the probably most useful thing in management of Exobacidium fruit and leaf spot is going to be a single application of the appropriate fungicide that occur is applied during dormancy approximately one to two weeks prior to leaf and bud break. Um, so you can, the result of that one application can be effective management throughout the rest of the season. Once you get past June, then you're not having new infections. Um, there are some fungicides that can be applied during the season. Um, some fungicides also have, if they're applied for other diseases, may have some efficacy against this disease. But you have to kind of watch not every product is labeled specifically with exobacidium. So that was one reason I didn't want to give um, any sp particular fungicides, not in being in Alabama and knowing which specific fungicides are labeled. I do know that um, Lime Sulfur Ultra does have an exobacidium label, and that is one of the ones that can be applied prior um, to the growing season during dormancy. I don't know if that product is registered in Alabama, um, but there is a list of products in the Blueberry IPM guide. And so that is, um, can be useful there. But the key point here is that if this is a problem one year and you may have it next year, the pathogen overwinters on the plants. And so keep in mind that that single application prior to leaf and bud break is gonna be most effective and will help you out the most. Mummy berry, again, is a, um, another important disease that many of you are probably familiar with. It is caused by a fungus. Um, symptoms in the spring may be observed as drooping leaves and shoots, followed by discoloration and death of the infected foliage. Um, those affected tissues eventually fall from the plant, but you can see tan or gray tufts on shooted blights, um, on blighted shoots, excuse me. And then when you, um, at ripening, the infected berries can turn cream to salmon pink, as you see in this image. Um, and so these berries begin to mummify of sorts and dry up, so they're called mummies. So they will be, infected berries will be soft at first, but then when they shrivel and harden, they may eventually drop to the ground. And then you may see um, the, planting floor um, may look very similar to what you see in the image. So again, this fungus um, overwinters in the mummified fruit on the ground, and it can survive for several years in the soil. The fungal spores can be disseminated by wind, rain, or insects. And it's particularly important that if you have frost injury, um, due to late frost, that again, we talked about environment, a favorable environment. That is a time that you need to be thinking that if you have that late frost or frost injury that occurs, that those tissues may be more susceptible to infection by mummy berry, and you would want to take action to try and protect your plants from becoming infected at that time. So, in terms of management, um, Practicing sanitation through uh, cultivation and removal of those mummies on the orchard floor can help to remove some of that inoculum. You can bury those mummies by adding a one inch layer of mulch to cover those mummified fruits. Eventually what will happen you, from those mummified fruits can develop the small mushrooms that you see in the image on this slide. And so if you are applying that mulch to cover the fruits, then what you're doing is essentially covering the, preventing those mushrooms from growing up and then being able to spread spores that can infect plants. So pruning frost, frost injured canes can also be useful. And 
harvesting equipment can, you can spread the pathogen um, from infected fields to non-infected fields. So if you have multiple fields and you know some of them are infected or have um, mummy berry in those fields, you wanna clean the harvesters in between those fields and make sure that you're not trying to spread there, spread the pathogen there. Um, again, fungicides are one of the useful tools for management of mummy berry. Um, those fungicides are gonna need to be applied from green tip or first bloom, whichever comes first through bloom. And then there are various active ingredients that have either very good or good, I'm sorry, very good or excellent efficacy against mummy berry. Another disease that you may see, again, this is kind of starting towards the beginning of the season, is Botrytis blossom blight, and it also causes a fruit rot. Um, so this is caused by a fungus. Sometimes you may hear of it referred to as gray mold. So twigs can, or even initially brown and black, but then can become tan to gray. And you may have abundant gray mycelium and spores that develop on those blighted blossoms. You can't really see that in the images, but it is pretty um, unique to, for this disease. And then you can have fruit rots that occur after a harvest if, they, um, if the fruits are infected. Typically this disease causes losses very early in the growing season. Um, but, and it can cause severe damage when you have rainy weather through bloom. So again, this fungus can overwinter in or on plant debris. Um, so this is the third disease now that you're seeing that the pathogen can overwinter either on the plants or in that plant debris. And again, this one, this pathogen, um, fungal pathogen, the spores can be that are produced in spring can be blown easily by wind and can move and spread to new plants. So for management of this disease, you wanna use practices that promote air movement throughout the plant canopy. Um, if you apply excess nitrogen fertilizer in the spring, that can actually help to increase the chance for disease development. So you wanna avoid the excessive use of nitrogen at that time. You wanna harvest fruit often and as it ripens, which is a key point for many um, fruit rot. And again, rapid post-harvest cooling, <clears throat> excuse me, too, is important to help inhibit the post-harvest rot for the Botrytis fruit rot. And then there are fungicides that are also useful and effective against um, the development of blossom blight and fruit rot. And those are listed in that IPM guide as well. So anthracnose fruit rot is another one that can be important. This is another fungal disease. Anthracnose can also cause um, leaf spots on the leaves, but I want to focus on the fruit rot, rot which is commonly called ripe rot. But you, as you can see on the slide, you have the blighting of blossoms. The fruit often remains without symptoms until you have maturity when the blossom end becomes soft and sunken on the berries. And then the most common sign that you can see with anthracnose or right rot is the salmon colored masses of spores that may develop on those infected berries. Again, this fungus is one that overwinters in and on blighted twigs. The spores are released during rains throughout the growing season. So we're seeing this common trend of fungal spores being blown easily by wind or being splashed through um, during rains. With um, this disease, all fruit at all stages is, um, and meaning all stages of the fruit is susceptible to infection. And again, thinking about those favorable environmental conditions, losses due to ripe rot are more severe during prolonged periods of warm, wet weather during bloom and before harvest. So I know I was talking to some colleagues earlier, we were talking about the weather conditions, we're having lots of rains. Rain is important for the spread of many fungal diseases or for infection of many of, of plants by many different fungal pathogens. And so you can kind of keep in your mind that these are things that when those 
rain, those weather conditions occur, you may likely have periods where disease develop, the disease development is more common. Um, so for anthracnose fruit rot, you want to use appropriate cultivars. Susceptibility does vary among cultivars and species. Again, as with the, um, to try and prevent the fruit rot, you want to harvest fruit often and as it ripens. That post-harvest cooling is important. And then fungicides are another useful tool for this disease as well. Those fungicides will be applied from bloom through the cover sprays. And there are numerous active ingredients that are available that range in efficacy from fair to excellent. So one other, the last disease that I wanted to mention, um, bacterial leaf scorch. This is caused by a bacterium, Xylella fastidiosa. This disease was first reported in 2004. So again, this is still a fairly new disease um, that research is still being, on which research is still being conducted to try and answer some of the questions that we have about it. This disease is more problematic in southern highbush blueberries. And this bacterium is transmitted by insects that feed in the xylem or the water conducting tissues of the plant. And the symptoms of this disease that you can see here, um, particularly in the photos on the far left, um, you have a marginal scorching that progresses towards necrosis, where the tips of the leaves often turn brown and then start progressing toward the inside of that leaf. And then another kind of unique symptom of this disease is that the yellowing of the stems that you can see in the photo on the right, when those leaves drop, that makes it more easily, uh, these yellow stems more easily visible. But then it progresses from those scorching symptoms that may be confused as symptoms of drought. And then you can see the plants without the leaves and those yellow stems, and eventually um, the plants will die if they are infected. So for management, you don't want to take cuttings from diseased plants. You want to use resistant or tolerant cultivars if there are any that are available for your area. Um, the plants will die, so if you, over time, so if you leave them in your planting, then they may just serve as a source of inoculum and the pathogen may continue to spread, so you want to remove and destroy infected plants. And then vector management of the sharpshooters, the xylem feeding insects that transmit this disease, this pathogen, may be useful at reducing disease spread. It, uh, this has been more widely studied in some other crops such as grapes. Um, so we don't, it's still a factor that is unknown, but it is something that may be effective, but we just don't have the um, current research to say for sure how effective it may be at reducing spread. So again, that was just a quick reminder. I wanted to review a few different diseases. Um, the bacterial leaf scorch, there are no chemical management options for that disease. Some of the other ones, there are chemical management options and those fungicides are very useful at managing those diseases, but as with any disease management program, you wanna use an integrated disease management program. You don't wanna rely solely on fungicides, even though they may be very important to achieving sufficient management of any particular disease. You wanna make sure that you're implementing cultural practices as well as those chemical management options because those cultural management practices may help to reduce the amount of fungicides that you may be needing to put out there. When using fungicides, you wanna make sure that you are using them properly. Follow the label directions as the label is the law, but this is not a purchase one fungicide and then apply it throughout the season. You wanna make sure that you have a fungicide, a seasonal fungicide spray program that involves rotation of fungicides by the different chemistries. So fungicide rotation is important because you wanna make sure that those tools, the fungicides remain effective for long periods of time. And if you continually use the same fungicide over and over, that 
increases the likelihood that pathogens may develop resistance to that fungicide and you will lose a tool that may be useful. Another important thing to remember is that fungicide coverage is important. Um, that may often be overlooked, but as your plants grow in size, you may need to increase the amount of water that you are using to apply the spray to your planting so that you're getting the sufficient coverage for protection of your plants. Again, I mentioned a couple of times about harvesting to prevent the fruit rot. Properly harvesting and handling fruit is important. There are some fungicides that can be used to help reduce fruit rot, but that should certainly be used along with um, harvesting practices to harvest fruit when they are ripe and completely harvest the ripe fruit from the plants. You wanna ensure the rapid post-harvest cooling and you don't wanna handle fruit when wet as that can make those fruits more susceptible to development of the rot. After all of that, you wanna not forget about disease management after harvest. You may have the crop, but that doesn't mean that after the crop is, comes off the plant, that you can't still get various fungal diseases or diseases that attack the stems of those plants. So you still wanna make sure that you're scouting for disease and implementing disease management for any other disease issues that occur. And then you wanna continue your education, continue to talk to your extension specialists and agents, continue to attend events like this and to look for, um, get the, latest extension publications and IPM guides. I mentioned bacterial wilt and xylella. Those are new diseases that have come up in the last 20 years or with bacterial wilt. That was something that's only been around for, I think, six or seven years, but they it has spread and been observed in Georgia. So new things develop, new management practices or better management practices may be tested and found to be effective or some of the management practices that have been around for a long period of time may not be as effective. So continuing your education to make sure that you're up to date with any changes um, so that you know what to expect and what to be on the lookout for can be very useful as well. So that was a quick overview of some things, just tips and reminders to pay attention to during the season some of the diseases that you can look for right now to make sure that you're still protecting against those diseases or planning for the future. And my contact information is there as well as um, the links to various publications in the chat box.